Hello all. In the next tutorial, I will be showing you how to do communication between the processor and the peripheral based on interrupt signaling. Before that, I would like to give you some background on interrupts. Uh, this has nothing specific to do with uh, Zinc and I will be giving the general overview of interrupt which are used in all processor based systems. So as you know, the processor in a computer, it has to manage uh, several peripherals. It has to manage maybe communication devices, timers, input output devices, data transfer devices, etc. Now most of these peripheral devices, they are quite slow compared with the speed of the processor. So what happens if the processor waits for one of the peripheral to finish its task before serving another peripheral? So in that case, the overall system performance will come down. For example, if you have a printer, you know, which is a mechanical device, and you ask the printer for printing something and if you wait for the printer to finish that printing operation before doing something the overall system performance comes down so what you would prefer is uh, you want to do the print operation in parallel you want your computer to do other things now uh, there are mainly two ways of communication between the peripheral and the processor for synchronization so one method is polling which we have discussed before so in polling uh, what happens is the processor keeps on checking the pro peripheral to decide whether the peripheral has finished a particular task or not so this is usually done with the help of a status register so the peripheral will store its current status in the status register. For example, it has finished uh, doing a merge operation like our previous IP. So the processor will be keep on reading from the status register. And whenever the status register changes, the processor understands like he has finished processing, something like that. Now this is similar to uh, you are waiting for your friend and you keep on asking your friend like whether he has started or not. Okay, so that is a analogy for polling. Now this style of synchronization is very slow because the processor is stuck in checking the status of a particular peripheral instead of doing some useful work. The processor he is supposed to do some processing but here he is not doing any processing. He's just keep on reading the status register. Now to avoid this uh, bottleneck we have the concept of intro. Okay. So the basic idea here is instead of the processor keep on checking the peripheral, the peripheral will inform the processor once he has finished a task or uh, in any case if the peripheral requires some attention, uh, he will inform the processor instead of the processor checking the peripheral each time. Now this is done through a hardwired signal so there will be dedicated wire going from the peripheral to the processor and these signals we call as the interrupt signals now in modern systems there are uh, there are systems where there is no dedicated wire going like that like in pci express the mechanism is slightly different uh, but in most cases from the peripheral there will be a dedicated wire going to the processor now when the peripheral requires some attention from the processor he will make some signal high through this dedicated wire now this is the pictorial representation of it. So we have the processor and we have three peripherals here which are connected to the system bus and this is the so-called the intro signal which is coming from this peripheral all the way to the processor. So you can have intro coming from all the peripherals if, if they want to get the processor attention. Now what happens when the processor receives an intro? So what happens is uh, once the processor gets the intro, it will complete the current instruction which uh, it is executing and it will push the program under to the stack memory and uh, he will service the intro. So basically servicing the intro basically means executing a set of instruction predefined by the programmer whenever an intro happens. Okay, once the intro is serviced, the program under is taken back from the stack memory and the processor will continue its execution. Now that uh, specific instruction or set of instructions which are executed by the processor when an interrupt comes is called 
intrap service routine okay so this is also a kind of subroutine a uh, some kind of function the difference is these functions are not explicitly called from your program these functions are automatically called whenever a particular interrupt comes okay so each interrupt usually will have a dedicated isr okay so for different interrupts we have different isr now when you write an interrupt service routine there is a general architecture how you will do it so the first thing that you will be doing is to disable the particular interrupt which caused this isr to run we are doing it so that while running the current isr if one more new interrupt comes the isr will be reinvoked so this will cause some kind of nesting operation so you are running an isr and before finishing that new interrupt came so you will run again an isr then again interrupt comes so on and so forth so this kind of becomes like a nesting operation if if that is fine again depends upon the implementation uh, we will handle it like that but in most cases we don't want a new interrupt to come while we are executing a particular isr so we will disable the corresponding interrupt which caused this isr to run then maybe we will check the status register of the peripheral to check what caused this interrupt because not only task completion other other things can also create interrupt uh, generally if some error happens like you might have seen like the printer the paper got jammed or things like that this can also create interrupt signal so we will read the status register from the peripheral and check what caused this interrupt and based on the value in the status register we will take the necessary action okay if it is the completion of the operation we will decide what to do next whether to ask to have a, a new task or if it is any error how to correct that error things like that so once that intro is serviced we will re-enable uh, the intro and the isr will be returned now isrs are usually very time critical piece of code so usually we don't write print statement things like that inside isr we will need to finish the isr as soon as possible because we have disabled this intro so we need to finish it and re-enable the intro uh, as soon as possible so that's why we usually do not put uh, print operations things like that inside an isr now how do we link a particular isr with a particular intro so as i mentioned before each intro signal has a corresponding intro service routine so how the processor links these two things so that is done through something called uh, as a intro vector table or ivt so in the intro vector table okay so this is usually predefined uh, what is predefined is the starting address of the isr for the corresponding intro okay so as i mentioned before isrs also uh, are also functions but uh, they won't be stored at random location in the memory instead they will be stored in predefined location so if it is like if this particular intro comes uh, the isr for that intro is starting at this particular memory location so that is predefined through this table and the processor will be knowing this table and based on this table the corresponding intro is linked with the corresponding isr now in this picture you can see we have uh, one more peripheral sitting here written pic it's called a programmable intro control so what usually happens is the number of intro pins available on the processor will be quite limited for example if you take 8051 you have only two pins dedicated for external intro signal so if you are directly connecting your peripheral to the processor at the most you can connect only two peripherals but usually you may have tons of peripherals so you won't be able to directly connect the interrupt signal to the processor so what you will do is you will have a, a dedicated chip if you are going with a, a non soc implementation something called as an interrupt controller or programmable interrupt controller advanced interrupt controller different kinds of chips are coming what this chip does is he will aggregate all the interrupt signals from the peripherals and he will apply a single intro to the processor so if any of the peripherals make an intro the pic will send an intro to the processor then the processor will check the pic 
or the interrupt controller to find out who generated this interrupt. Then the VAC will say this particular peripheral generated the interrupt. Then the processor will go and service that particular peripheral. So this is like a two-step operation. Okay, so the PIC initially interrupts the processor. The processor checks the VAC who initially generated the interrupt. Based on that, he finds the particular peripheral who generated that interrupt and he services that interrupt. Now, usually uh, these interrupts which we are connecting to PIC will have a number associated with that, which we call as the interrupt request number. Okay, so in modern systems, these numbers are assigned uh, during the boot operation. When we go to the uh, Zing design, you will see that is assigned at the design time itself. So this number, these are uh, unsigned integer values uh, and they help to determine which particular peripheral raised an interrupt. So each peripheral will have a unique IRQ number. Now if you see uh, IRQ number 120 doesn't mean it is the 120th peripheral or 120th wire coming. Uh, that is not the idea. Usually the IRQ number is assigned based on the preference. So the most critical interrupt will have a smaller IRQ number. If you look at our modern system, IRQ number zero will be usually assigned to the system timer, which basically decides the scheduling between the operating system and your other software. And IRQ number one is always assigned to the keyboard because keyboard interrupts are very very frequent and we are they are very time critical so on and so forth so these numbers they somehow convey the priority of the interrupt signal so using this interrupt signal the the pro processor or the pic will decide the corresponding interrupt service to be run and from the interrupt vector table he will find out the starting address of this particular interrupt. The last slide is on interrupt sensitivity. Okay, so when a peripheral raises an interrupt signal, uh, the CPU or the interrupt controller can detect this interrupt based on two cases. They can be either so-called the edge sensitive or they can be level sensitive, like our flip-flops, like uh, edge triggered and level triggered. So if it is edge sensitive interrupt that means the cpu or the interrupt controller will detect an interrupt only when the interrupt signal changes its states from either low to high or high to low depending upon some register configuration if it is level sensitive that means it will detect when the signal is constantly high or constantly low again these settings you will be able to do by configuring certain registers in the interrupt controller Okay, so this is the general overview of intro. Now, how this is configured, how to use the intro controller of Zinc, etc., we will be seeing in our next tutorial. Thank you.